The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And welcome to episode 9 of The Meltdown. I'm Norm. And I am Jeff. And we are here today creating this show. We are inventing this program as we're going along, we are, right? We are inventors. We're, we're being like Thomas Edison. Right? Exactly like Edison, yeah. yeah. And uh, we've already tried a thousand ways. The show doesn't work. This is the one <laughs> that's going to work. Uh, today on the show, we're going to be talking about uh, the 10 most important inventions in the world and the history of mankind or person kind and also we're going to be looking at some of the dumbest inventions and trust me when i say you're not going to want to miss this all right in our stupid stupidness uh we also have lou saracino in for a meltdown minute with lou and his take on inventors so let's kick things off the way we always do with some meltdown fun facts here are the top 10 inventions that changed the world according to LiveScience.com. Are you ready? I Number ready. one, the wheel. Oh, yeah. Before the invention of the wheel in 3500 BC, humans were severely limited in how much stuff we could transport over land and how far. Apparently, the wheel itself wasn't the most difficult part of inventing the wheel. When it came time to connect a non-moving platform to that rolling cylinder, Things got tricky, according to David Anthony, a professor of anthropology at Hartwick College. All right, invention number two, the nail. Oh, yeah. Without nails, civilization would surely crumble. This key invention dates back more than 2,000 years to the ancient Roman period and became possible only after humans developed the ability to cast and shape metal. Previously, wood structures had to be built by interlocking adjacent boards geometrically, a much more arduous construction process. And we've seen how some people, you know, what are they, what are they called? Like groove, groove yeah. cuts almost. And mm -hmm. you can, if you groove cut, you know, you can kind of lay the wood into itself without yeah. nailing. But, mm -hmm. uh, oh my gosh, when you think about mm -hmm. how often we, we, you know, we use this technology, we don't even think about Take it. Take nails for granted. Although you don't want to yeah. nail in your rubber tire. Here's another one. Uh, the compass. Oh, yes. That's Ancient one. mariners navigated by the stars, but that method didn't work during the day or on cloudy nights. So it was unsafe to voyage far from land. The Chinese invented the first compass sometime between the 9th and 11th century. It was made of lodestone, a naturally magnetized iron ore, the attractive properties of which they had been studying for centuries. So there you go. Did you know that? Um about the, 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 the Chinese inventing the compass. I did not know that specifically, yeah. no. But uh, yeah, compass, you know, which way do you go? And of course, the, you know, radar these days and all that, you know, yeah. one thing leads to another and, you know, how planes can fly and, you know, or how they know where they're going. Oh, yeah. know where they're going. Without That's compasses, I mean. it would all be, it yeah, wouldn't be. so wouldn't the compass is very important, obviously. All right, here's another one of the top 10 inventions that changed the world. The printing press. Mm -hmm. The German Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press around 1440. Key to its development was the hand mold, a new molding technique that enabled the rapid creation of large quantities of metal movable type. With this movable type process, printing presses exponentially increased the speed with which book copies could be made. And thus, they led to the rapid and widespread dissemination of knowledge for the first time in history. 20 million volumes, get this, had been printed in Western Europe by 1500. Mm. 20 million volumes. Here's another one uh, of the top 10 inventions that changed the world, mm. the internal combustion engine. Mm -hmm. Now, in these engines, the combustion of a fuel releases a high temperature gas, which, as it expands, applies a force to a piston, moving it. Thus, combustion engines convert chemical energy into mechanical work. Decades of engineering by many scientists went into designing the internal combustion engine, which took its 
essentially modern form in the latter half of the 19th century. The engine ushered in the industrial age, as well as enabling the invention of a huge variety of machines, including modern cars and aircraft. Here's another one of the top 10 inventions that changed the world, the telephone. Mm. Though several inven inventors did pioneering work on electronic voice transmission, many of whom later <laughs> filled intellectual property lawsuits when telephone use exploded, Alexander Graham Bell was the first to be awarded a patent for the electric telephone in 18. 76. Do you remember uh, Bell's test to, uh, was it his assistant? Do you remember what he... Uh, Watson, come in here, I need you. Very good. I remember those are the exact words, but very that's good. basically what it was. Watson, come in here, I need yeah, you. Very good. Um, and, you know, we talked about uh, uh, Edison at the beginning of the program. Yeah. And, of course, you know, you, one has to, uh, has to pay homage to this man and his invention, the light bulb. When all you have is natural light, productivity is limited to daylight hours. Light bulbs change the world by allowing us to be active at night. According to historians, two dozen people were instrumental in inventing incandescent lamps throughout the 1800s. Thomas Edison is credited as the primary inventor because he created a completely functional lighting system in 1879. Mm. So imagine that. Uh, okay, let's move on to another invention, uh, one of which changed the world, and that would be penicillin. It's one of the most famous discovery stories in history. In 1928, the Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming noticed a bacteria-filled petri dish in his laboratory with its lid accidentally ajar. The sample had become contaminated with a mold, and everywhere the mold was, the bacteria was dead. That antibiotic mold turned out to be the fungus penicillium, and over the next two decades, chemists purified it and developed the drug penicillin, which fights a huge number of bacterial infections in humans without harming the humans themselves. Ooh, this is a fun one. Contraceptives. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, not only have birth control pills, condoms, and other forms of contraception sparked a sexual revolution in the developed world by allowing men and women to have sex for leisure rather than procreation, they also have drastically reduced the average number of offspring per woman in countries where they are used. With fewer mouths to feed, modern families have achieved higher standards of living and can provide better for each child. So there you go. Our last invention that qualifies as one of the top 10 inventions that changed the world is the internet. It really needs no introduction. The global system of interconnected computer networks known as the internet is used by billions of people worldwide. Countless people helped develop it, but the person most often credited with its invention is the computer scientist Lawrence Roberts. In the 1960s, a team of computer scientists working for the U.S. Defense Department's ARPA, or Advanced Research Projects Agency, built a communications network to connect the computers in the agency called ARPANET. It used a method of data transmission called packet switching, which Roberts, a member of the team, developed based on prior work of other computer scientists. ARPANET was the predecessor of the internet. They wanted a way in which the military could stay connected to each other in the event of a nuclear war. Uh, it's nice to go back and study those and yes, to, to read up on them and, and to go, hey, wow, you know what, if, if that wasn't invented, man, where would we be today? Mm. Uh, with more on inventions, here is Lou Saracino and a Meltdown Minute with Lou. Necessity is the mother of invention. That's what they say. What they don't say is that procrastination is the step-cousin of invention. Nobody really talks about him. They're, they're a little ashamed, I think. He has a learning disability, much like myself. It's a whole other thing, and I'm kind of getting off topic. My point is, invention is important. Invention is responsible for everything around you. The only reason you can see and hear me right now is because some guy had to invent the camera and the microphone, and we've had some amazing inventors in the history of the world, whether Da Vinci, whether Tesla, whether the Wright brothers, and by the way, think about that for a second. These two Schmendricks, every Sunday, would head down to the beach and they'd build what they called a plane uh -huh, out of a spare bedding and a two by four. Just cross their fingers, baby. And that is remarkable. That is what moves the world forward and changes things for the better for everyone. Invention is necessary. That's it.
Thank you very much, Lou Saracino. And next week, uh, Lou is going to be joining us right here live uh, on the program. And the three of us, uh, I have no idea what we're going to do, but it's, it's a free for all. Uh, God knows what's going to happen. Uh, but don't miss it, whatever you do. Uh, right now, it's time to, uh, to go to some meltdown, stupid stupidness. <laughs> All right, so we have here I, a list of 25 oh. inventions. 25, okay? So we've got to go through these, All but right. 25 mm -hmm. inventions, and that will leave you shaking your head like, what the hell were they thinking? We're going to uh, check these out on the monitor, Jeff. Okay. And for you at home, we will flash these up. Number one, the car exhaust grill. <laughs> so, now, <laughs> as you can see, the whole idea, you can make hamburgers uh, in your exhaust pipe. Uh, who, who, who thought that would be safe? Anybody? At Any least it would be warm. <laughs> yeah, but anybody out there, would, would any of you actually do this? Would you actually try to cook right by your exhaust? Mm, I don't like, think so. Tastes like gasoline. Yeah, and I don't understand what that foul, smoky smell is, but uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll move on to our next one uh, the avocado saver <laughs> now yes avocados once you open them you know they can get kind of gross right yeah. and you want to put them down in something <laughs> like that the uh the the most flack this product got was was because of the seat belt <laughs> the <laughs> avocado really doesn't need uh anyway to me i think you could probably just wrap it in cellophane mm -hmm. and you'd be fine so but hey, to the inventor of this, uh, if if you've actually made money on it, well, then people are dumber than I thought. It's like the Green Bay Packers helmet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may, well, you know, at least the avocado won't get concussed. Yeah. Avocado heads instead of cheese heads. Here's another great one um, for those of you who uh, heard your feet get hot. How about air conditioned shoes? <laughs> And look how happy that guy is. He is so happy because he's got air. It looks like coming out of the shoe, but I think it's supposed to be coming into the shoe. I have no idea if those are holes uh, or if those are electronic fans. I don't know. Uh, seems pretty messed up to me. He's smiling like he's going to make a million dollars off of that. Uh, let's go to our next one. Uh, this is just a novelty item. The eye potty. A little place for you to... Put your iPhone or your iPad, I guess, and I uh, i really don't know what the hell else is good about this. Not terribly sanitary. Well, not if you're actually going to take a dump in there. <laughs> Pardon my language. But convenient. Yes. Hey, convenient if you are going to take a dump in there. Uh, here's another one. This one is fantastic. I think everybody should have a pair of these. Shoe umbrellas. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Not only will you look like a fucking mental case when you're walking down the street, but you'll also have these bright little umbrellas sticking out of the tips of your shoes, it looks like. Was that invented by the same guy that invented the air conditioning? The air conditioning shoe? I'm thinking so. I'm so you know when it's so. wet out, when, or when there's like air conditioning, you don't want to be wet because then you get cold. So maybe exactly. the, two sh the two inventions go together. Exactly. Although if you're walking in air conditioned shoes on there and the thing yeah. sucks up water, then you're screwed. Okay, let's go to uh, another one. Uh, for women who sleep on their side but want to maintain their shape, there's the breast cushion. <laughs> nice, a nice little oh, where do we thing go that. Here, uh, well, we don't go anywhere, <laughs> Jeff, because uh, nowadays because it's it, that says it all. That says it all. There's really nothing else to be oh, said. Man. Like it says, breast support for side sleepers. <laughs> So uh, there you go. So when you wake up in the morning, you can actually take that cushion out and your breasts won't move. Is that a breast separator <laughs> between your breasts? Or are you or just is happy that... to see me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Uh, speaking of bras or... Oh, I just gave it away. Oh. Uh, the man bra. Oh. Well, yes, some guys the, do need it. I, I guess some of them do. Uh, the guy in the photo certainly doesn't, I'm no, thinking. No. No. He's a well-toned man. I don't think yeah. he needs a bra. And do you remember the Pet Rock, Jeff? Oh, of course. Well, you know there's got to be uh, today's version of that, yeah. and that, of course, is the USB Pet Rock. <laughs> Plug it in, and it does nothing. <laughs> At least it's plugged so, in. Just, you might as well just, just leave it plugged in. Let it charge all the time in case you need to do something with that rock of yours. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, here's another one. Uh, this one's, again, one of my favorites. The Goldfish Walker. <laughs> 
<laughs> for those people who like to take their pets on a little stroll, well, you know, <laughs> goldfish don't walk, so you kind of have to bring their environment with them. <laughs> it's like a space space suit or something like that, you know. <laughs> You know, bring the air with them, is in this that, case, the water. Is that not more work than is worth it to walk a fish? Like, hey, how? Fish need sunshine, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our next one, which is probably more useful than this one, and that is the toilet golf game. <laughs> See, he was so, reading about how to improve his game with that yeah. magazine there. <laughs> I wonder what their slogan would have been. Um, <laughs> are you perched pooping? Practice putting. <laughs> Some people will like to waste no time. They have to go take a dump, but they don't want to waste. I got to practice my putting. I got to do something constructive <laughs> while I take three minutes in the bathroom. Yeah. Here's another great invention that we're so thankful was made: the walking sleeping bag. <laughs> So I guess if you're asleep at night, maybe you're a sleepwalker, uh, you know, then you got to get up and move around. I guess the walking sleeping bag is for you. Uh, now, if you have to get up to pee, you'd probably have to unzip that thing, I'm thinking, because I don't think it comes with uh, yeah. diapers or anything. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one that the ad, the ad, I mean, says it all. The privacy scarf. <laughs> when... You don't want anyone else to see what you're looking at. Yes, the picture of the right to me, this is this is perfect. I mean, everyone would look like this at work if they all had one of these. It's like a really long Viewmaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Alps. I can see that. Yeah, what are you working on, Jim? None of your business. <laughs> I'm watching people sit on the toilet and putt. <laughs> okay, I just have this fetish oh, for that. Yeah. <laughs> Give me my breast cushion and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's another one moving on. Uh, this, someone said this was a bad idea. The neck pro. <laughs> supposed to uh, supposed to help you straighten your spine. But anything that grabs your head like that, that's sticking from the top of a door, I wouldn't trust. <laughs> Somebody walks in and, or you forget about it. It's like, oh, I yeah. got to go golf on the toilet. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's true if you I forget it's about... there. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, now my spine really hurts. Oh. <laughs> okay, moving on. And I have one of these only oh. because my wife bought one as a joke. The hair hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, <laughs> because I don't have any hair, right? You know, she thought it would be funny if I put that on and so it looked like... Yeah. I have hair. I don't. In the, uh, in the before picture, he definitely looks unhappy, but the next one is like, oh, why'd you bother? Well, the actually, the next one looks like he's coming on to you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at now that I've You're got right. hair, uh, I suddenly have a big package. <laughs> uh, probably just a breast cushion stuffed in his pants <laughs> in his walking sleeping bag. <laughs> Right. All these inventions go together. <laughs> they do. They all work together. Uh, this one is the wine glass holder necklace. Um, yes, the wine glass holder necklace. Now, I can, you know what? I could sort of almost see a practical use for this, you know. Uh, but in, it just it just looks just stupid. And I, why would you... Don't people like to hang on to their wine glasses? Mm. Isn't that part of the whole? Drinking yeah, maybe of the if wine? you speak with your hands a lot, which I which I have a habit of doing. I speak with my hands, and you can just put your your glass of wine or your beer around your neck for a while, and you can see, st keep speaking, and then they can invent something yeah. that it raises to your mouth. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so anyways, I was at the uh, sauna here's last the, week. Here's and... the problem I have with this product, yeah. okay? Because mm -hmm. you're talking about that, you know, people who wear, you know, uh, medals. Mm -hmm. you know around their neck because they're yeah. proud of the medals they've earned yeah. uh, like the olympics for example mm -hmm. or people who have lockets with people's pictures in them right. you know, to have a wine glass <laughs> really says god i love alcohol <laughs> all right you got and, only one star do you notice oh yeah i'm <laughs> yes only one star and 25 bucks not worth it uh okay uh next one uh, as i was starting to say earlier if you have trouble sleeping maybe it's because you need a Female lap pillow. <laughs> so apparently this is to represent a female lap if you have uh, trouble sleeping. It's just like sleeping on Looks mommy's like a lap. a female or... lap or a female buttocks. Or it boy. could be female anything or it could just be nothing and <laughs> sold as a female lap pillow. Yeah, it's art. It's what you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to our next one. I don't know if this has any merit. The banana slicer. <laughs> uh, fortunately, it's shaped like... A banana, so uh, I guess. I mean, I've Saves seen. Saves time. 
I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, it takes me about 30 seconds to slice a banana. That would take like two seconds. <laughs> you think? Well, what if the banana didn't quite fit? Then you'd yeah, have to take yeah. it out. You'd have to cut some off. It'd probably take you long. You'd have to buy bananas that are exactly that shape. You'd have to bring that to the grocery store. And, and match yeah, because the... the bananas at our grocery store are a lot curvier than that. Yeah. All right, so moving on, we, we've decided, Jeff and I have decided that's not a good invention. No. Uh, oh, here's one that's brilliant, though. The lipstick stencil. <laughs> if, if you're completely stupid and don't know where your lips are, this lipstick stencil will help you put lipstick on. Look, you can go all over the place and only your lips get affected. Well, you know, if you're driving, and you should never put lipstick on when you're driving. We've done a show about that. Yeah. But just hypothetically, I guess that would help if you're driving. But you know what? Don't put lipstick on when you're driving. <clears throat> don't do that at intersections. I look either. at this ad and I see... Hello, Clarice. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I had his liver with father and a nice Chianti. <laughs> <laughs> now something else for the face, the facial flex. Uh, you, know how the, you know how the face has a lot of muscles, right? You know, and it actually takes more muscles to frown than it does to mm. smile. And they say that's why you should smile. But so if you smile a lot and you don't frown and you need to work out some of those muscles, get a little face flex. That, that sucker just goes in between your lips and stretches it right out. I can't tell if she's really happy or in anguish. She looks know. like she's in a lot of pain. Yeah, not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a great invention, and if anyone's ever bought this, uh, welcome to the stupidest person in the world club, <laughs> and that's diet water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in fact, if somebody can actually convince you that diet water exists, and you buy it, you're an idiot. <laughs> and this uh, is complete. Uh, completely for you. Let's go on to our next one. Uh, if you have a lot of remotes in your house, the remote wrangler is brilliant. <laughs> you uh, can wear it on your head and you can just <laughs> stick the various remotes. Now, uh, where's the VCR? Is that my left ear? Or, no, oh no, the PVR is my left ear. The VCR is my right temple. <laughs> Oh, uh, they got the uh, 1970s American Basketball Association. <laughs> if all those devices had been invented in the 1970s, that's what the that's what they look like. Trendy ABA player would have been wearing. Yes, <laughs> you could play ball and watch your favorite show at the same time. <laughs> Speaking of watching your favorite show, what about this TV hat personal theater? <laughs> <laughs> now, notice this guy's not actually driving. He's He's in the back seat, uh, so watching his personal theater with this oversized ball cap, and uh, man, if that doesn't look like a contraption, that uh, wow, I don't know. How's he going to drink that from that coffee mug? I don't know how he's going to see it, uh, but wow, that just—that's like Darth Vader trying to drink when he's out, out and about. <laughs> Next one. The cat napkin chain, and I think they're called, uh, it's called the cat napkin chain because those are, I think oh. they're supposed to be little cats. Yeah, they're cute. Uh, so the idea behind this invention is, of course, you, you know, you need a napkin. You, you don't have to try shoving it into oh, your shirt, oh, which all that. guys do, right? Like yeah. I do that all the time. I know, but it goes in and it's like, oh. <laughs> I but, no, I don't. You know this is you know where somebody obviously got the uh, this idea from a uh, a dental hygienist. There's no question. <laughs> but this is the ty type of thing they use. They put that that napkin on you with the little chain to keep it up, right? Yeah. They do. So anyway, uh, I don't know if that's the dumbest invention or considered one of the dumbest, but uh, probably pretty useless. Here's another uh, great great invention. I'm being sarcastic. Is the gas powered flashlight? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> A fit in your pocket flashlight. <laughs> this this thing has an engine that powers the light. And uh, good luck to you if you ever had to find that in the dark. <laughs> and our last, sad to say, our last crazy invention is the ever popular DVD rewinder. <laughs> it's the fastest DVD rewinder available. You know, avoid rental charges to rewind. Now, folks, notice that it's a DVD rewinder, <laughs> not a VHS rewinder. There's nothing to rewind. It's a DVD. So whoever, obviously, this is like a pet rock invention, right? This is like, uh, let's put one of these out because it's funny and people will buy it. And uh, you know, God bless you. If, if you're the inventor of this and you made money, God bless you. Uh, I would love to have that. And what, be, as a conversation piece? Well, just be straight-faced about it and go and, oh, you have, a, you have somebody over and say, oh, I just have to rewind this. And just, and they're like... 
Whoa. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna buy that. That's what I'm gonna buy. Just just to see. Well, what... get on eBay and see if you can find one. Okay. I'm sure you can find. There must be a whole ton of them out yeah. there. That's all for this episode. We will see you next week for our tenth and final episode of season three. And Lou Saracino will be joining us. Have yourselves a great week. We'll see you next week. And keep inventing stuff. Bye. Bye.